Hello, this is JY83, and this is my review of the Monaco Grand Prix, which has just finished, and it was a victory for Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari, leading away 1-2 from Kimi Raikkonen, and Daniel Ricciardo finished off the podium for Red Bull. And it was a, it was an interesting race. It was definitely a slow burner, but uh, the first 60 laps were pretty dull, but then everyone started crashing, which sort of made it okay. So yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting race. Vettel basically won just because uh, Raikkonen pitted early, and uh, that meant Vettel could have free air and just absolutely fly and use the pace of that Ferrari that he's got and just uh, overcut Raikkonen and, and uh, ended up winning the race because of it. And it was a it was a very good strategy call from Vettel just to, and he's obviously the much better driver out of him and Raikkonen in my opinion. Even though he didn't win on Saturday, he managed to uh, overtake Raikkonen or overcut Raikkonen in the pit lane. And yeah, very good, well, very well done to Vettel. Another win, he's got a big lead over Hamilton now. I think it's 25 points in the championship. And second was Raikkonen, he'll be pretty disappointed with that I reckon. And Daniel Ricciardo, who has uh, done well to get third for the Red Bull. Who was running? He was running fifth place, and then Verstappen pitted early to try and uh, undercut Raikkonen, or to try and undercut one of the Ferraris, and then that made uh, that made Bottas also pit to try and cover off Verstappen, and then Ricardo was left in free air and just absolutely flew, much like Vettel did, and overtook the pair of them when they were battling behind Carlos Sainz, I think it was. So yeah, uh, Ricardo also did quite well, and uh, he'll be happy with that to get a uh, third place, his second podium of the season after. Uh, I'm running side by side everywhere here. I've taken it out. My apologies. But yeah, Verstappen was really disappointed with fifth. Bottas was fourth. I'm pretty sure I'll take that. And then sixth place, a very underwhelming, like underrated drive from uh, Carlos Sainz. He's very, very solid in sixth place, holding off Lewis Hamilton for quite a while, who was seventh place after qualifying uh, 14th, which was an absolute bottle job from him. So well done, Hamilton. But uh, even so, he managed to damage limitation quite well. Ends up in a uh, seventh, which isn't that bad c considering what it could have been. And uh, he'll be pretty pleased with that damage limitation. Eighth place is Roman Grosjean, and uh, double points for Haas with Grosjean eighth and Magnussen tenth. And then in a ninth place splitting them was Felipe Massa. So that's the points finishes. And the the main talking points of the race were uh, nothing. The start nothing happened really. And then on lap 15, Hulkenberg had an engine failure, pretty disappointing as he's my favourite driver. But even so, it doesn't really matter as um, well it does matter because he could have got points. But he was still going to absolutely smash his teammate. Palmer, who was pretty awful. So yeah, Hulkenberg, I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm pretty sure Renault were very disappointed as well as their gearbox problem, I think it was, forced him into retirement. And then that was really the only action until lap 60 when Button absolutely destroyed Pascal Verline. Which, uh, yeah, it was an interesting one. Button just dive-bombed Verline into the corner before a tunnel. And Verline ended up on his side and his like airbox and helmet were buried inside the barrier. So luckily Verline escaped unharmed and uh, yeah, Button was definitely at fault for that. He retired as well. So both those cars were out on lap 60, which brought out the safety car. And then uh, after that, there was absolute madness as like loads of drivers just started going mental and crashing. So one of the funniest moments of the race was definitely Marcus Ericsson, in a, who, who decided to, when unlapping himself, like behind the safety car, unlapping himself to catch back up to the back of the pack, he buried himself in the tyre barrier. So well done, Marcus. I'm pretty sure you've... Uh, he showed us all how good of a driver you are, and he was uh, out of the race at that point, just after his teammate under the safety car. And uh, yeah, Ericsson, very uh, strange crash, but he's a pretty awful driver, so I'm not very surprised. And then Stoffel Van Dorn, who uh, I think it was, he got dive bombed by Perez, or Perez was looking to go for a move, and then didn't actually go for it. But Van Dorn tried to leave the space and went straight to the barrier, and yeah, disappointing because McLaren could have got their first points today, but both their drivers ended up retiring. And uh, yeah, the next retirement was Daniel Kvyat, who also got dive-bombed by Perez. So Perez didn't do that well in terms of a clean racing. I'm pretty sure he would have got plenty of penalties on F1 2016, but uh, the stewards in real life aren't that strict, as it's uh, not ridiculous in real life. But then uh, in the next retirement was Lance Stroll, who on lap 73, I think it was, just decided that he had enough and decided he wasn't going to race anymore. So he came into the pit lane, retired, not quite sure why, but it didn't really matter anyway, as he was... Uh, I think he basically retired to make sure he got to the end of the Monaco Grand Prix without crashing. So Stroll managed to do 73 laps without crashing, but still retired. So staying on that, and then that was the last retirement. But Sergio Perez and Esteban Ocon in 13th and 12th, which Force India were very disappointed with. Is um, yeah, Ocon. I think he qualified lowly because of the practice crash on Saturday morning, and then that really compromised his race and ended up he got a puncture at one point because of the manhole cover that came up just outside, just after uh, Saint Devot. So, yeah, I can't really be disappointed with that. He ended up behind Johnny and Palmer, that's never where you want to be. And Perez, just he got so involved with so many incidents, he, I don't even know what he was doing, he just kept crashing. 
Uh, he did set a new like, record at Monaco though, so well done to him. He's the sort of guy, it seemed like he was just getting annoyed in a, like, in a sprint mode lobby when you get taken out too many times, so you just uh, corner cut and get purple lap. That seems like it was what Perez did. Uh, so yeah, Perez ended up out the points. His, the first time he was out the points for quite a while, I think it was. And then um, 11th place, just missing out on points. As you would expect, is Johnny and Palmer. As, um, where else would he be other than not in the points? Johnny and Palmer 11th, really showing how bad he is, as he, uh, he didn't like do anything, really. He just stayed there in 11th and already saw him, but it was uh, he kept out the barriers, so it could have been worse. But he's also showing that Hulkenberg was ahead of the Massa and both Haas cars, and he couldn't get ahead of them. So yeah, just showing how who the number one driver at Renault is, even I think everyone in the world knows by now. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Pretty uh, okay race. I'd give it a 5 out of 10. It was better than Russia and Australia. There were, I don't think there was one actual on-track overtake that didn't end, ended a crash. But... Um, yeah, Perez certainly livened it up for us. He crashed into everyone. Button flipped Van Dor flipped, flipped um, Verline, sorry, you can get our words out. And yeah, that was pretty much it then. So I give it a 5 out of 10. Not the best, but not the worst either. So decent race. Vettel now leading the championship by 25 points. And this has been my review of the Monaco Grand Prix. Leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. This has been JY83, and I will see you next time.